Hello. So my talk is basically everything Harry Giles said. <laughs> Staffing plans, project plans, income distributions, the visual model that dominates our understanding of society is the pyramid. Capitalism is compared to a giant Ponzi scheme. And it's fact that exploiting resources in this way means that there isn't enough of the planet to be able to feed the bottom rung of society. This one here charts relative value against labor. You can see there's a tiny number of people in the boss class and they take more value out of the system at the top for their work than the mass, vast majority of people, mostly women, I'm afraid, at the bottom rung of the hierarchy who receive no payment. Child rearing, caring for the elderly or infirm, community builders, disabled, artists, these people. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, after all, the other needs are met, shelter, food, safety, family, love, esteem. Self-actualization is the last thing at the top. Creativity, problem solving, and in the capitalist economic model, it's only the rich elite who get the resource to experience this level of need fulfillment. So this one here is what the world's finances look like. This tiny bit down here at the bottom of the triangle, that's what real money is. That's seven times the annual cash value of stuff that's produced across, across the globe. And these two bits above are the, all the loans that represent money that doesn't exist yet, but it will be collected at some point in the future. The huge bit at the top, that's the derivatives market, the shadow banking system. That money doesn't exist. It will never exist. And yet it amounts to almost 1,000% of the entire GDP of the globe. The world is in debt. To who? Mars? Don't know. The debt is, the, the, you know, it's crazy. The production of things that's been withdrawn from the system by, by the elites in society. So within the sex, next seven years, this economic system is going to collapse. 85 numbers of people own all the wealth, and if this trend, trend continues, we're hurtling towards habitat and species collapse within the next 50 to 200 years. Even with minor redistributions of power into a decentralized hierarchy, wealth is extracted and exploited for the few, with destitution at the other end of the pyramid for many. So artists shape the future. They cut through that hierarchy of needs and create sp spaces for self-actualization that operate outside the hierarchy of labor and instead in the gift exchange. Artists help us prepare for the future. They are on the threshold of becoming, bringing things from their imagination into being with one foot in the future and one in the present. They prove that non-hierarchical strategies can build new worlds that better represent our human values. Doing things on a small scale, recognizing and using small power through networks, critique, agency, complicity, resistance. Artists are placed to give shape to the narrative of a post-economic, post-crisis future. Artists become the media, and they remind us of how meaning and truth are constructed. In an internet age, age they have an unprecedented political role defining critique and new solutions in ways that capture people's imaginations and their attention really quickly and very powerfully. Advertisers have copied this, but artists can create memes that direct the future. So we've gone from a feudal power structure where the royal dude is the center of all society through globalization into a multiple decentralized system where corporations or polities exert control over parts of the system to the present day and what is becoming or could become a truly networked society. So we are now individuals. And images that represent our psychological selves have also shifted from the vanishing point of the collective royal dude society, to the market pyramid of individuals, to the present, multiple identities and inter-networked reality as individuals. We're interdependent. Artists are super connectors within this new global polity we find ourselves in. So we need new visual concepts of power and identity for this age that we're living in. We can see from this aerial view here how something small and individual can interconnect with other nodes to a devastating, powerful effect. This is fracked farmland in America. All of these tiny, small instances can cause severe extraction or damage, or they could cause something wonderful to develop. The new world is now facing a massive wealth and power grab from the giant corporates. And in some places in the world, the communities still have access to good water, food, and shelter. 
private legal action, however, by these multinational companies and massive trade deals like the TTIP are annexing or destroying these common goods. Most people in the world don't know this is happening. So we need to find other ways to find water and make our food. And this is the food garden that hangs off the side of Vrit, an art center in Ghent. Never mind jobs for life. We're finding that the whole concept of a single source of income in relation to labor is increasingly becoming an anathema. You might know that Kodak used to employ 140,000 people and it's been replaced by Instagram, which employs just 13. Jérôme Lanier, who wrote a fantastic book, You Are Not a Gadget, illustrates it well. He predicts that the production uh, in the future has shifted to networks and intellectual property rather than objects, and industries then need fewer and fewer people. So he argues that mass employment from the formal economy is what we're going to see. And just as we see journalism not quite managing to monetize the net, that's a struggle that most other companies are going to face, and we are all going to be freelance. So the vast majority of the world already actually exists in this informal economy, and only 1.2 billion of the world's 7 billion population exists in that monetized labor exchange. So the further 2 million billion make money through black market or on tax trading, and the remaining 2.8 exist entirely in the informal economy. No money is exchanged hands. So we know that human endeavor isn't predicated on money, and as long as we have hands and minds, it's impossible to claim that the world is bankrupt. There are gift economies, social economies taking place. Uh, performance arts practice in particular reveals an informal economy of gifting, time and effort to make projects happen, regardless of where you are on the professional scale. So more than ever, artists are vital to creating a compelling vision of the reality that we are all living through. The governmental advisor, Jeremy Rifkin, reckons that our technology revolution is so extreme in its productivity that we could actually reduce marginal costs to near zero, making products nearly free and no longer subject to market forces. And as long as net neutrality is maintained, a radical new economic system could emerge from the collapse of capitalism, which artists would be the midwives of. Thank you.